Folks, you do have to fight it, and that's why we're here uh, every Wednesday at UCY.TV. Much love to Jules and Paul for keeping the station going. And this is going to be a continuation of last week's show. Uh, if you missed that, that archive is available uh, on YouTube. And my guest is just awesome. She's a powerhouse full of energy. Paula Flo, executive director of the Hitting Stops here. If you're a newcomer to this, uh, 19 states allow our children to be abused, and, and that just is is the most generic overview I could even give. Uh, I, when I think, I, I don't have girls, but I have boys, and when I think, if I did have a girl, and my little girl uh, started her period, she turned into a woman, and I, she came home, and she was paddled while she's, I, I, Kevin would get an assault charge. Uh, Kevin would get maybe multiple assault charges, and it might be aggravated. Anyway, enough about me. Paula Flo is here with us. She's going to continue on, hopefully at the end, folks. Uh, make note of your questions. Hopefully we'll have time uh, to get those questions. And if not, they can be emailed to myself or to Paula on her Facebook. We'll get you all the links. Uh, and without further ado, welcome to the show, Paula Flo. It's an honor. Hi, Kevin. Thank you again for having me here on your show. I so appreciate it. Oh, it's it's awesome. Um, it's just uh, it's it's irritating uh, that you have to be here, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. W worse than irritating. But I am trying to refrain, folks. If any of you know, uh, because um, sometimes my rants uh, and vocabulary uh, might take away from the cause at certain times, and this is something that we cannot diminish in any fashion. So uh, the F word has been suspended for this series <laughs> you know uh and and this would be a subject that would really get me using a few of them paula quite honestly it really would uh, it really would um yeah. i know that since we met last you had one train of thought of where we we're going to start and then uh some stuff came up midweek that was kind of urgent so um i'll leave it up to you as to where we start anybody that wants to fill in the blanks can see the archive uh and then we'll take the floor please shut me up <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin, again. And, uh, yes, uh, I have to inform my fellow U.S. citizens about an urgent situation going on in Arizona. As a matter of fact, uh, the hitting stuff here is actually making plans to travel to Arizona next week because of what is going on. We think this is an opportune time for um, helping the children in the 19 states Arizona is one of the 19 U.S. states where teachers are still allowed to take that same slave board uh, and beat children with this uh, 
you know, as a, as a normal practice. And uh, in addition, I learned very recently that Arizona is also the nation's capital for having children kidnapped. And we're talking directly by the Child Protective services, CPS. And uh, the average person, you know, you may see a child in trouble. Your first instinct may be to call Child Protective Services, CPS. Sounds like they're going to come and be at the rescue. However, from what I know about CPS and from what I knew even before the things I learned this week, which I'll share momentarily, I would never call CPS on anybody uh, regarding their child even if that child's life was in danger. That's how irresponsible Child Protective Services with uh, their operation and their agenda uh, against children in this country. Uh, we are thinking about naming our campaign rally Operation Arizona Let My People Go because they are doing all sorts of heinous things to children. Um, I'm in touch with a number of families whose children have been literally just taken from them. No criminal charges, but the parents have to be tested every week. Their urine is tested for drugs. Uh, they have to take parenting rights classes. Uh, last week I did mention that there is a, a, a movement or a group called Parental Rights, and legislation under that title has been passed. But I'm telling you, Mom and Dad, right now, that uh, title would be most accurately named Hijacked parental rights because these parents who have had their children taken from them are unable to get them back because according to parental rights they could say well uh, your child needs surgery you didn't make sure they had the surgery uh, we now have to take your child into custody and that's the sort of thing that parental rights is allowing the other thing is that uh, where a mom and dad in the USA now you know if a, if a divorce happens the mom gets the child half the time, the dad gets the child half the time under circumstances where both parents are healthy. The only time that doesn't happen is that there's a problem possibly of abuse or some other uh, falling short of one of the parents. Parental rights, one of their goals is to make sure that even parents who are abusive to their children not only have the opportunity to see them but to be with them alone and to continue their abuse. Um, to tell you how clearly parental rights oppose the protection of children in America, I, well, the person leading parental rights is Reverend Michael Farris. And this man is a menace to school children, to children everywhere, even nationally. He is in the way of the Convention on the Rights of Child, of the child being ratified by the USA. We are one of maybe one other nation under the sun failing to sign that so that if you happen to know of uh, child abuse going on in another part of the world, which I'll give you an example. In Ecuador, there's a man out who's known for murdering hundreds of little girls. He did his 20 t years, he's out. Somebody from here would be able to impact that. You wouldn't have to uh, say, well, I can't help those girls in Ecuador. Wish somebody over there was doing it, but I can't. The Convention on the Rights of the Child makes the, opens up the international lines for anybody knowing about a child abuse or kids being placed under servitude and, and abused and tortured. Anyone would be able to help. And Reverend Michael Ferris, along with his whole gang, are preventing that uh, international right from being passed. Well, and, in my, if, if yes. I can, just quickly, Paul, in my opinion, sure. in, in today's world, considering the circumstances, any time uh -huh. the title uh, includes reverend and, and the subject is children, we have to be on guard. Uh, oh, absolutely. A, I, I'm horrified. These are the people that are supposed yeah. to be the role models in, in the safest yeah. place on the world, and it's yeah. the most vile. Anyway, enough. Uh, I'm sorry, no, but I had to throw that in there. Just uh, people <laughs> are reminded of of that. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Kevin, because what you're saying is so true. And this Reverend Michael, he's a danger, and I'm telling anybody that right now. And uh, to add a little more proof, 
uh, uh, the legislators on the Education Committee of the 112th Cong Congress who could have signed the bill to protect these children are the same ones who signed the parental rights bill, which takes away rights and takes away protection of our children. So it's very important for people to know that. People have gone on my Facebook event saying, hey, you should get involved with parents' rights. They actually uh, joined the event, and I said, hey, aren't you under Reverend Michael Ferris? And they've not responded once. So that tells me right there they they might have been planning a, a train wreck on our event page, but I fortunately am ahead of them in uh, knowing what they're all about, and they're not about the good for your children. Um, and did you have any question before? I kind of was going to shift gears here, but did you want to ask anything about that, Kevin? Uh, no, not specifically, but I do uh, want to uh, just remind you and, and wonder um, if you had any time to connect with some of the members of Op Liberation. And I mention it now because I wanted to just give a quick announcement at the beginning that I forgot. Um, but the Op Liberation movement, folks, I'm going to type that into the chat room, then you can copy and paste it. For you Twitterers, please keep an eye on that. Go to the search on Twitter and then save it because um, along with what uh, Paula is fighting for, the Op Liberation Movement is also fighting for the kids and the abuse uh, in the institutional aspect. And there are some major releases that are coming out uh, in the next few days. I'm not going to name the institution uh, that's going to be named but um, the, the few facts that I heard of, uh, we're talking about things like uh, basically murder, death, anyway. Uh, anyway, I'm going to save the little bits that I know, but ask you to watch that tag. And, Paula, I'm going to reiterate, if, if you haven't reached out with your cause and your information to that hashtag and that cumulative group, you must, because um, we really need to get this attended to, and, and they will yeah. help. They will help. Uh, because oh. they're, they're there for the children, and so you uh, know what. Thanks for reminding me of that, Kevin. I didn't realize that's what that text was. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that message you sent to me was about. I will do that today. And uh, people must remember that our school systems are our institutions, and so I would only imagine that they would support us because school is an institution. And um, but um, I wanted to get on with the issue of Obama's hidden homosexual life and its relation to USA school beatings, because this is very important. A lot of people uh, have written and said different things to me, and I really want to clarify this. First of all, Jerome R. Corsi, that's C-O-R-S-I, a Ph.D., Harvard political science major, has posted information out the, about the president that responsible households are discussing and sharing with their communities. It's very important. You know, some people may go that route and say, hey, Paul, so what if he's gay? What's the problem with that? You know, whether I would have a problem with it or not, that's, that's between man and God and is neither here nor there with this hidden behavior on the part of Obama brought up on the, on this issue that how i feel doesn't doesn't matter the issue is and i want to ask you listeners for a moment to just picture yourselves entering into a relationship with someone you hardly know but everything seems well and you fall in love and eventually marry and not too long after you learn the person you married had a previous wild active party homosexual life which they never brought up during courtship you learn of a previous uh, pre-arranged marriage in which your new love entered, say, for the sake of social acceptance in order to lead a big company, and we could name any company, to its doom. You learn also that there is a dead body involved in, in this hidden lifestyle that this person that you fell in love with has. And although you believe this person to whom you are now wed is an American, you realize that you've never even seen their birth certificate. So really you have zero evidence of their actually even being born in America, and it turns out to be only something that you assumed. 
and you ask if you may see their birth certificate and on a number of occasions following up on that they still haven't produced their birth certificate for your perusal and you begin to realize that the dreams you both discussed before marriage are drifting further and further away and where you are headed is everything that one might find in a nightmare you know questions begin to arise in your mind one after the other who is this person where's their birth certificate why am I finding about this significant part of their past lifestyle months later into our marriage what is up with this deceased person involved why was there a pre-arranged marriage and finally how far does this rabbit hole go well, and, I was just gonna, uh, yes, if I can, yeah, it, um, because I'm having a little bit of a hard time following how that ties to what's going on in school. So if, if you could, and I'm excuse me because I had a long day, but um, is he uh, against any legislation that are going to protect our kids now? What I, I mean, has he well, made? Because pro- I know he's made promises and not followed through. But as far as uh, legislation keeping these kids safe or hiding. Uh, this stuff that's going on. Uh, Is there anything going on there? Um, Yes, yes. There there are a number of things. And one of them is, of course, as chief executive enforcer of law, he can have these kids protected immediately under the 14th Amendment. Okay, the 14th Amendment means keep your hands off other people. And as executive chief enforcer, he is not doing that. Furthermore, in the documentary film that came out August 2012 entitled 2016 Obama's America love him hate him you don't know him that also gives indication as to why the uh, beatings are going on in our school there is an agenda behind the beatings because as Marcus I think I mentioned this last uh, show uh, the governor of New Jersey banned school beatings in 1867 in the state of New Jersey, that's where he was leading, because he said the wooden board is a slave tool. And additionally, in the entire history of corporal punishment being used in schools anywhere on the planet, none of them have ever returned during school beatings. Once it was banned in that nation, it was banned. The one and only nation that ever brought corporal punishment back after it had been banned and gone for a while was Germany and that was under the Hitler Nazi regime so has he I mean has there been any legislation in front of him recently that he could have um, endorsed that would that's what I mean mean. yes I understand the legislation that he can sign of course is the one that we've been working for over the last three four years that's ending Corporal Punishment in Schools Act. And, and there's no, what I'm getting at is there's no way he can uh, make the excuse that he doesn't know or that hasn't been brought oh, to his attention. Because I already, I mean, I already know my point of view is that he doesn't give a shit about children anyway because I know innocent children have died in other nations because of his bombs. And I know that um, one-third of the kids on the West Coast now have hyperthyroidism because he lied about Fukushima and the parents weren't able to protect them from that uh, mm-hmm. or mitigate that. So as far as his care about the next generation and how strong they are and able to lead this country, already two strikes, and this is a a third, because there is legislation. That's what I was getting at. Um, Because I want people behind you and looking into this and pushing their senators and their governors um, to to do this. Because, you know, whether you uh, condone... Uh, using spanking as a discipline uh, is on you, but to allow another individual outside of your family to do that, that if you decide that that's your job, you're damn right, that's your job. Not another individual who's outside of the family, public humiliation, uh, and, and, and also these laws that are in place that will protect the teacher if something really bad happens as far as, well, and psychological damage is really bad, but it doesn't come out until a long time later when you, you probably can't even find the teacher that did it. So anyway, uh, thank you, Paula, for the pause. Uh, but I just, I do, and I want to get a link, a link while you're talking. Maybe you can tell me where to get it, probably from your site, to the, uh, I'll go get the petition link and put that in the chat room again. And uh, also, um, that should have information about the bill. Is that correct? 
Yes, it does. And the bill itself is actually linked right on our home page, not too far from the top. It's in gold letters, and it says Ending Corporal Punishment in Schools Act Legislation. It's right there near the top. And you click on that, and you'll be able to uh, read the entire bill. And it's very important, Kevin, that uh, your listeners know that we have I've, I've the hitting steps here has traveled to Washington DC on six occasions and we have gone if you look at our YouTube you'll see the work in and out of the different offices President Obama is well aware of this as a matter of fact in his first year of service he made a very big donation to one of the schools in South Carolina where the kids are being beaten in and Car North I'm sorry South Carolina is number 51 that means you I'm sorry number 50 the very bottom of all US states and they allow the school children to be beaten he is aware of this there is also a video on my uh, home page where President Obama is telling the black community through the NAACP that we need to get back to whooping and yes he used the word whooping our kids and yet, he, prior to that, he's talking about how the pipeline to prison is starting with um, violence and in our schools and blah, blah, blah. And yet he is allowing fully for teachers in these 19 states where they are primarily poor children of color to be beaten. The NAACP has sold out on us. They are, I, I've gone to 18 different chapters, including right here on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. There is absolutely zero support for this bill to end the beatings, even though the number one target are, are black boys. And that's in a video, it's about three minutes long, where a Dr. Uh, Deanna Pollard Sachs, a professor of law, uh, gave the statistics and she laid it out. The boys are 16 times more likely to be beaten if they're black than their counterpart uh, white girls who are um, who are who, who, who receive much less or, or white boys who receive probably half that amount. The bottom line is is that out of 17 percent of our kids who are black Americans, almost 50% of them are getting it. And I mentioned that last week, 35% of the beatings of Native Americans, and they make up 2%. So Obama, and, and some people say, well, Obama has a lot to do, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, if it were the other way around, if the primary beaters, which presently are white males, primary beaters are white males, the primary kids being beaten are black boys. If the primary beaters were black males and the primary kids being beaten were white girls, would that be something that he would even get away with this long? He's in his second term. He knows all about it. Um, I actually was pulled over by this, his secret police here on the island because we had pictures in our hands. And when uh, Obama was on the island, we waited for his car. We followed it and a cop pulled us over and we showed it to them. We put it in their hands. We said, please give this to the president. This is what's going on. And we gave them material and everything and they took it. He, well, he knows this is going on. This is, this is all, uh, this is a huge pipeline to prison for profit scam on our children whose parents have no money to pay a lawyer to protect them. There is no way they think this is helpful and that's why it is not allowed in the top two states, along with the total 31 that, that are run by, number one, the U.S. Education Committee chairman on the Senate, which is Tom Harkin. He leaves Iowa. That's the number one state. Hitting kids is strictly prohibited. You'll go to jail for that in his state. Uh, John Klein leaves Minnesota, number two state in the U.S. You better not hit kids in Minnesota. Both of those states, the population is about 85% white, and their scores are very high, 1,700 plus on the average for kids uh, receiving scholarships. While South Carolina, they, they don't score anywhere for even receiving partial scholarships. And they're being beaten relentlessly. Well, this is assault. I mean, it's plain and simple assault. And, and I gotta, you know, just say this uh, for the teachers, uh, beware, because if any of those kids are like my kids, we have uh, one rule. This is how we handle ourselves. If somebody is intimidating us and, and, and we really think they're going to hit us or be physical, we give them one warning to keep their hands off us. 
and if they touch us, we break their nose. And this is how teenage boys, you know what I mean? Teen, you got to think about this. These, especially boys, when they're getting that, you know, maybe 11, 12, and they start getting a little manliness there, and you're not going to. And a teacher is, uh, damn well could get hurt when one of these kids takes a chair and bash them across the head because they thought they were going to pull a paddle on them. That's how I would want the teachers to think if my kids were going there because that's what I would instruct them to do. Uh, you well, know, you that's what I would do um, because that's assault, and you have a right to defend yourself. I don't care mm -hmm. if you're only eight years old. You have a right yeah. to defend yourself. That's not the parent. Um, mm -hmm. Things are going to get uh, violent. Yes, and Kevin, you know, to, to respond to what you're saying right there, I'd like to tell um, your audience about the state of Pennsylvania and how corporal punishment was banned in this state. Um, and it's very much to what you just said. There, on two separate occasions in the year 2005, 2006, around that time, uh, these 18-year-old boys, because you could beat kids whether they're 18, even 19. If they're seniors, they get beat because they're under the school law. So these two 18-year-old boys on two different dates, two different occasions, who probably never even heard of each other, were tired of being beaten by their teacher and took a gun and shot their teacher dead. Both of them ended up in prison for life. The teachers are dead, and the school banned, I'm sorry, the state of Pennsylvania banned corporal punishment the next year. And as far as I'm concerned, the fact that those boys right now, as I speak, are still in prison because the police wouldn't protect them. Their family was disempowered to protect them, and CPS wouldn't protect them. No one would protect them. They got sick of having some man take a wooden board and spank them like they were little prostitutes and they came and they shot them and on the second occasion they uh... banned this and it's a shame that those boys are in prison and so help me if i finally finish this i would like there's a lot of kids in jail right now because they turned around on the teacher for beating them those two were the extreme they shot them dead right in the class but there were a lot of kids with records because, like you said, they became a man, they were feeling themselves strong, and this man has the lawful right to bend him over like a little uh, prostitute and beat him. So that's how corporal punishment left Pennsylvania in the year 2007. That, that, that's great. I mean, you know, especially uh, I can't understand why more people aren't standing up to stop this. That's what I want to know. That's, nope. that's probably my mm -hmm. next question. Where the hell are all you parents? Mm-hmm. Where, mm -hmm. where are well, you? Well, you know, I mean, let me tell you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I know a portion of them aren't hearing this because uh, mainstream media isn't covering it. Even the alternative media, like Alex Jones, like you mentioned last week, they won't touch it. Uh, as a matter of fact, Alex Jones, didn't he in, in somewhat condone this behavior because parents, yes. parents are able to do it? Yes, yes. We, we sent him a message. I, I even put $100 in the bill hoping he would really read my letter and really get this out there. And what I heard back was, you know, you could beat your kids. And then there were a whole bunch of people who posted saying, I'm surprised at you. I can't believe you're saying you could beat your kids. And here we're going to this man to get this bill out. Because I believe that more people are like you, Kevin, out there who would have it over. And as far as when you say, where are these parents? Why are they allowing it? They know who to pick on. Yeah, I have been in Mississippi, Texas. I've been in at least nine different paddling states, uh, child beating states, not paddling. That's a euphemism. But um, where I have traveled and the parents I've spoken to, their English is poor. They have no money. And uh, they right. could be right across the street from a wealthy private school where the kids are well taken care of and protected. But in their poor school, they could be beaten. And these parents are threatened. I've had parents who their electric has gone off. Um, I've had parents say that uh, the the parent had the teacher is threatening their child and making the child afraid in school. And because the majority of the country doesn't know this, these people are singled out. It's sort of like if if, if people would hear this message and contact the hitting stops here. Because we are the forefront of this movement for this bill. 
and I have a list on my website on the message board of all of these organizations most of which we have contacted that have done nothing so not only aren't parents doing anything because they're afraid and they're poor but people professing to care about children and to be child advocates where are they I've been doing this seven years they all know me they see the work and we have a bill sitting on a desk of the number one person it's just laying there getting dusty while our kids continue to be beaten and murdered and and, and I don't see how it's possible to restore a nation where people are pointing at the government again and saying you're messed up you're corrupt you stink you're no good and you tell them that our children are being beaten and murdered and suffocated in front of their classmates and teachers are going on. In fact, those listening, please go to the hittingstopshere.com. You're going to see a photograph of a President Obama and below his photograph are three articles. Read all three of them. One in particular is the GAO report, the Government Accountability Office report. And if you open that and read pages six, 15 through 17 also you're gonna read about teachers who are murdering our kids and going on to another state a teacher murdered a kid in Texas and decided I think I'll go teach in Virginia and it was okay uh, and while and, we're on the theme just quickly Paula I wanna sure. um, just for anybody that's listening to this that has suffered this um, I've got to give a shout out and a plug to Sia uh, that's SIA uh, dash now dot org. It's going into the chat room. Um, reach out to Jody Hobbs if you've suffered this because there is, she's leading a group that um, SIA is survivors of institutional abuse. Which I mean, whether it's public or private, it's an institution. It's the same yeah. same thing. And yeah. uh, she just had a, a convention recently. They marched on Washington. That's awesome. She's really moving and shaking to be a support for the people. That have been. It's great because you guys make a great team. You know, you're the before this sh crap. See, I refrained. I'm so proud of myself. This <laughs> uh, you're the. You know, stop it before it starts. And Jody's out there as well for anybody that has suffered through this um, after the fact because we got to hit it from both sides. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been going on a long time, and there's a lot of people out there affected, and it's still uh, is hindering their lives in, in many ways. So. Um, yes, I just yes. wanted to give a plug, and Jody's uh, link is in the chat room now. So Yes, and Jody and I are good friends, and uh, we are helping each other, and uh, you're right. It's the same thing. It's institute. The, go the U.S. government is allowing it, and, when, and there's no recourse for any uh, judicial relief in either case. And that's why that whole Obama's uh, hidden agenda, I mean, he's coming out of darkness, he's coming out of not having a birth certificate, he's coming out of all of these dark places and saying you need to whoop him and knowing it's going on and allowing something that was only brought back during Hitler's regime, a practice. And the thing also is the United Kingdom under Secretary Michael Gove, uh, there's been a petition out, I have it on our uh, message board also, that they want to bring back this practice. And a lot of people started writing and writing and doing petitions, and I honestly haven't heard much more about it. But imagine two super world powers where you could beat the crap out of kids if you feel like it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, talk about ushering in the new world order. Just that's, use the slave tool and just beat them. So. Yeah, this, the absolutely uh, needs to be more attention to this um, because. Yeah. I mean, there there are next workforce, there are next uh, you know uh, politicians, there are next everything. Um, yes. And, and the condition the earth is in, we have to consider that too. That you know th these kids, uh, the condition our earth is in, our kids need to be better than ever because they got a lot of making up for our mistakes uh, and the mistakes mm -hmm. before us. And, and th this is just ridiculous. I mean, especially now with violence I mean they want to curb violence right they want to take everybody's guns take people's rights away because of violence but yet they don't want to put the time into addressing the issue at the core at the beginning with the child whatever the circumstances for that child are that you know um, it, it's just one more reason that in my opinion this whole system needs to be just the off switch and a new one constructed 
because when this <laughs> when this stuff is going on, you know, um, it, it can't it, this can't happen. Somebody we, somebody yeah. has to stop this, and there is no fucking hero. Oh, excuse me, I'm mm-hmm. uh, censored, mm-hmm. censored. I'm sorry. There is no hero. No, but- there is no hero except yourself, folks. And, and there mm-hmm. has to be many of them. Uh, it, you know, that's the hero. The group is the hero um, mm-hmm. of the people that finally get going with this. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know. Now, you had um, some other links as well that uh, you were going to sh- share. Were you able to get into the chat room, Paula? I'm sorry. I. Uh, yes, I am. Let Good. me. <laughs> I'm always all over the place here. Um, I am in the chat room now. And did you send a message? No, no, I was just curious because I know you had mentioned earlier um, that there were some links you weren't able to get out last time uh, because you weren't you weren't in the chat room. So, um, But if you have an issue with that, uh, just let me know. Oh, okay, sure. No, I'm not having an issue. But what I would like to do is uh, I will be listening to the show that I did last week, and I'm going to write down every link that is a reference to the things that I said, and I'm going to email them to you. And if you could post them in that YouTube, that would be helpful. And I'm going to do the same with this show today. I will. Uh And you just reminded me of something I want everybody to know. Um, Normally we record the live show and I turn it into a YouTube as the archive. But because of the awesome work of Jules and Paul just always doing something, um, archives are available now to listen on a web page. Saves me a lot of time. But for this show, I'm going to put this on YouTube and link it to the first session uh, in the uh, video response so that it's together and it sits there and uh, gets a little more attention from the YouTube listeners. So a uh, big shout-out to my YouTubers. Much love there as well. Please hit the remix buttons on any of these and include the links that I have below them. So, okay, back to you, Paula. Okay. And um, so one of the most important things that uh, people who are concerned, like yourself, Kevin, um, that movie that I mentioned, Obama's America, the 2016 Obama's America, Love Him, Hate Him, You Don't Know Him, is extremely important. Uh, you mentioned how we have a lot of making up to do for our kids. And, you know, we have the chemtrail spraying, we have the GMO food, we have uh, fluoride and other poisonings being poured into our water. And there's all of these things going on, and they're going on rapidly. So we have this, this criminal government basically doing whatever they can to cause harm to this generation. And then we have we the people who have power and are failing at using it mainly because we just we we weren't taught well what our powers are. And it's extremely important for concerned citizens who say, well, gosh, there's so much. Where do we begin? What's the beginning? What's the first step? How do we start here? The most important thing to do is to protect the children. The children are the future, and then you corral the criminals. And the way we could protect the children and exercise our power is by having this bill passed. I mean, it, it, it can't possibly make sense to anybody out there that we could get America flying right while our children are being abused and murdered with a bill already available that we the people can speak out for. So there are a lot of people who who point at the government and put them down, you're corrupt, you're no good, you know that. I mean, it's all over Facebook. Everybody is mad at the government. But what about we the people who are being silent about the fact that we have power as we the people to have these criminals Oh, well, who are yeah, failing to use their 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 sworn in oath to uphold the Constitution? The Fourteenth Amendment is being failed. Wherever kids are being beaten, like those eighteen year olds who ended up in prison, their Fourteenth Amendment was violated, and they cannot speak for themselves. The Ending Corporal Punishment in Schools Act is nothing more than the Fourteenth Amendment, different jog jargon. So that it could look like, wow, we got to fight for the kids. We got to fight for the kids. Get them a bill. Get them. A-. We have a bill but they're not enforcing it. So then we come out with this, okay, hey, guys, look, here's a bill for the kids. And even with this big flag being waved, I, I, I remember during the Louisiana uh, floods, and the woman, some people were holding that sign that said, why aren't you helping us? That's how I feel in this movement. 
It's like, why aren't you helping us? We have a constitution. If we don't use it, our children lose it. This is an opportunity for us to use our constitution to do the first most important thing, which is to stop the legalized governmental sanctioned abuse and murder of our school children. And we're not even fighting for a bill. We have a bill. It's just laying dusty on John Klein's desk, U.S. Education Committee chairman, because no, there aren't enough people ringing his phone or holding signs or saying we won't send our kids into these violent schools where you're trying to say you're ending bullying when you're paying people to bully and murder. How, how is it that we're going to allow that to happen and this country be restored at the same time? In my opinion, the beginning of restoring this country is the simple act of finding out your constitutional rights, recognizing that the children are being violated, and calling these criminals in Congress and in all of the branches to upholding their sworn in oath. And if they do not, they need to be fired as treasonous. They need and to even be arrested. They need, yeah, they need to be arrested. And it's funny you mentioned Facebook because uh, the other, I think it was yesterday, the day before, or whatever. I, you know, I just, I see all this stuff, and you're right about the people bitching about the government. I, I posted, the, you know, the United States is under control of a terroristic regime voted mm-hmm. in and protected by the American people. Yeah. We allow it. This is, yeah. you can point fingers all day long, but if you really want yeah. to get real, you, you, get, you can't see that this is going on. Uh, you know, and well, there are manipulations too. You know, maybe we could pass laws that didn't involve 900 pages of verbiage, you know, so that the average person who has 15 minutes to consume any news, if they're lucky daily, mm-hmm. could actually read it, participate, and understand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, which that never happens. That, well, that, this bill isn't <laughs> long at all because all it's basically saying is see, a lot of no, people. No, I mean, don't like have... the things that the politicians write, like, uh, you know, NDAA. How many pages was that? Right, and, and people, right. so you have this. But, uh, no, I wasn't referring to yours. Um, oh. But I mean, most of the the bills and the laws that the politicians create and pass are so extensively long that the average person, uh, first of all, they probably can't understand half of the words in there, and they're certainly uh-huh. not going to read 900 pages of anything, uh, even uh-huh. if it's a Steven Spielberg novel. I'm not re- yeah. uh, You know what I mean? You, you yeah. have to be a reader to even. Uh, waddle your way through it i mean that's to me it's tormenting i need yeah. people to point me to the section of the bill because i won't read the whole thing uh yeah. and, and until they point me to the section that is really most relevant to whatever the, i i won't no because i'm not voting on it anyway i won't take part in the system that's okay. how you stop it don't take part in the system and i have never voted i won't vote it's a terroristic regime i, I won't do it I won't yeah. Do well, the thing, the thing, Kevin, about the uh, NDAA and this bill and all that is the the short story that people need to understand is that the U.S. Constitution is a body of laws protecting our God given rights. That's it. The forefathers said, if we don't have this in writing, we're going to all become enslaved. We just won the revolution. We're in this country. We are America, but guess what? If we don't have something in writing saying you can't take away my right to speak, you can't hit me, you can't uh, tie me up and do things to me if you feel like it. So they created the Constitution. The Constitution is the God-given rights of American people. And the NDAA as well as the NDRP were designed to wipe the Constitution away. And people are taking it like, wow, I can't believe we're losing more and more rights. It's sort of like like they're taking our rights away from us the way one would take candy from a baby. And it's mostly because people don't understand that the Constitution is a body of rights to protect our, I'm sorry, laws to protect our God-given rights. And if people understood that, I don't think they would do what they're doing and being silent. As far as the silence goes on, they have to go home. They have to look at their child. They're feeding them. They're putting them in seatbelts. They're making sure they take a bath and have nice clothes to school. But you, but where we are failing this generation is the more we ignore our constitution and just allow it to fritter away 
into the hands of the, the New World Order and let them slip in this NDAA. No matter how long the NDAA is, the bottom line, it is to erase your God-given rights protected by the Constitution. That's really all you need to know. Let's get rid of it. Let's Absolutely. join and get rid of the NDAA and the NDRP. And the thing is, is that if you are remaining silent, can you really look at your children and say, hey, guess what? One day when you grow up and you want to be this and you want to be that, there is no such thing as that anymore. Well, if we you're are not silent, leaving that for our children. If you're silent, in my opinion, you're guilty of contributing. Yes. If you yes. know, if you know, if you don't know, well, with after, you know, being fluoridated since the 50s, I can understand. You've been taking low yes. doses of Prozac. Everything is fine. You're willing to comply. I do understand. But if you know and, and you just, you, you don't get active, these, these are the kids. So anybody hearing this and, and doesn't at least, you know, share the information or do something, I'm not telling you what you have to do. It might be as simple as tweet this video uh, for a week D but just do something you know do get off something. your butts do something maybe you yeah. can't do anything beyond that so do work within your means but yeah do something you know yeah yeah and perhaps something can also be visualizing your child in a FEMA camp wondering where the showers are because that's where they're trying to get us they want to stick us in FEMA camps they want to stick RFID chips in us and in the long road some people might ah, oh, that's not happening or if it is happening it's down the line okay well it's your grandchildren well, but if we're heading in that direction then and, and you're doing nothing then it's sort of like how much when you say I love you to little Johnny or Janie how much do you really love them when you can know that kids are being abused and murdered right in front of their schoolmates I'm advising we have a my bill kids. to ban it and we do nothing uh, I'm sorry Paul I'm advising my kids along with you know I don't lead them in the direction they should go as far as employment and stuff uh, you know I've always taught them to work but I let them choose and uh you know, but I also have started to talk to them that I really want them to uh, get active with learning computer skills and hacking and coding and those things because this is the the world we live in. When in Rome, uh, do as the Romans, and everything is online. And these bastards uh, that have been there goes my language again. I'm sorry. I told you this is such a subject to me because it's <laughs> the kids, but the, everything is online now, and, and now you can be removed. You 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 can be removed, a mm -hmm. and you need to know there's all kinds of stuff that you you can access to protect yourself to to help others to do without any bloodshed. So I I mean I'll never make them do anything, but I have encouraged them to do that, um, you know, and just in general to be active. So you I mean you have to live within the system. You have to work every day. Uh, Dad doesn't have any trust fund. So you're going to have to go to work and find something you like to do to pay the bills. But when you get home from work, could you, you know, <laughs> start being active? Because we, yeah. we, need, we need to be raising activists. Everybody's been sitting on their butts for so long. Uh, we have a, a generation of, uh, you know, uh, actively lazy people. Um, yes. And, and it's horrifying. And, and it's, costing our, it's costing the entire future of this nation and our loved ones, the ones we call our loved ones. Uh, if I may hey, have a moment, I would like to uh, re let you know regarding this woman in Arizona. First of all, her name is Takeda, Takeda Riley. She told me I could say her name. She and her children are in danger. The CPS has taken her children. They had no charges against her. Yesterday, they had a hearing for her and her children, and I was able to listen in by speakerphone. They knew I was there listening. And the thing that was most alarming is that this mom, again, has no crime against her at all. They just took her kids. When she went to the hearing, it was for them to decide, okay, uh, it's been a month, let's see how things are going. I want to tell you what the mom said to them and what they said to her. She reported that the six-year-old has told her that his hands are tied over his head and his feet are tied too. They won't give him any food most of the day, and when they do, they pour hot sauce on it, and they, let, they won't let him have any water. They hurt his private part, and that when all the children go out to play, he is kept tied up and never allowed to go outside to play. Now, she has three kids. The second child has reported to her, he's nine, he said that the people working there allow the teens to circle him and jump him, beat him, and molest him. 
the 12 year old there he recently turned 12 and said that when he fought off a man from placing his private part on the bare bottom of his six-year-old brother they separated him from his brother so he cannot even see the little boy anymore where he is now is with bigger boys who make them put their private part in his mouth and that they have been molested and raped he has been molested and raped repeatedly since being there the man leading the hearing who heard her say this said that's business for your attorney and you won't be able to get your children probably until November and uh, that was all he said he said you're gonna have to take that to your attorney and your children are scheduled to be returned to you in November and now is that there, was it I mean what was their basis I know you said there wasn't any charges but what was their basis even for taking the kids well, the basis so-called is They're that so the called. mom, she said that the community did this. She was outside instead of right inside of her house. She was outside of the house talking with neighbors. And the children were inside watching television. But she was in earshot of her children. It was just like a hot night, and they were out talking, and the kids hey. were in there. They told her she was neglecting her children, so they took them from her. And this That's is absolutely a, a, ridiculous. That's absolutely low, absurd. And, yeah. But that's what they're able to do, and that's what they can do. And with parental rights, they now, now uh, oh, I forgot to mention that they have written down that her children are already listed as becoming adopted children or foster children because they said you, you, they can't be in your hands. Well, after the meeting yesterday, she called me this morning, and she's been informed she's not allowed to see one of her children because she's taken pictures of the bruises on their bodies. One of them, his eye was injured in about six different places from the outside surrounding area to the eyeball itself. And she's t- taking pictures, and now she's being denied seeing that because they said that she's teaching her children lies and she doesn't want them telling lies to other people of these horrible things that they're not doing. And additionally, the man at the hearing said, I've been doing this work for 19 years. I've never heard of such abuse. Well, I don't care what he's heard of. Is she? I mean, she has photos. This is, the place should be stormed yeah. uh, by the police. It, it, yes, these children are suffering right, right now as we speak. The little boy is tied up. His feet are tied up. And when he eats, they pour hot sauce on the food. And he's only six. And when he gets to see his mom, he's always crying. He cannot even talk because all he's doing is crying. And he, he utters a few words, and then all she could do is rock him. He wants to go home and be with his mom where he belongs. But our U.S. government has sanctioned child abuse through the Child Protective Services, and this is where they are. I'm going to make sure, Paula, that this information uh, gets through. There is a network of people... Um uh, anonymous uh, in nature that are tracking and fighting uh, pedophiles specifically. So yes. one, once this we, is, uh, and I will reach out um, to some of them and make sure that this information gets shared. Any, uh, uh, you know, you'll send me an email uh, with some info so we can nail yes. down. Uh, and we have all of their names, we have all their phone numbers, and she asked me to make them public. So I'm posting all of it on our website message board because they are in such danger right now, these children, that she feels like just go for it. They're trying to kill my kids. They tried to have one of their sons go through surgery, and the mom was threatened, you, well, if you don't sign, you're interfering with medical, and she was so afraid she signed, because they were virtually threatening her with prison. I told her she needed to go back immediately and withdraw that, and they started questioning, why can't we do this, and blah, 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 because I told her, I said, you don't know what they're going to do. She found out later the doctor who wanted to perform the surgery is one of the molesters. And this is this is the dire situation that these children are in. And now, I, I mean, I, I would rather say all of this and they get helped and I end up in jail for saying a whole bunch of wrong stuff than to not say this. This woman has no reason to lie, nor does a six-year-old, about his hands being tied up. And when she touches him, he's sore. Well, she could hardly touch his, his body because he saw all over. Is there a guardian ad litem involved in this? There should be. I know New Hampshire requires that. Any child that's in foster care does. Not that that's always uh, any protection, but um, is there an independent party, uh, you know, representing the children? 
Not at all. Not at all. And they're not allowed to have any that say, any speaking with the counselor at the school. They get taken to a public school. They are told not to play with the kids, and the counselors are not allowed to speak to them. So these children are unable to speak to anyone. And now the middle one who's been molested is now being prohibited from seeing his mom. That's the condition of this one family, and I have, I have a, a number of stories like this for you, this one being among the most egregious. It's but horrific. this is just the tippy tip of an iceberg of all of the kids out there. Yeah, this, this can't go on. I mean, I'm, I'm just at a loss for words. I really am. I mean, it's like I want to drive there right now and, uh, you know, get, break the doors down and pull those kids out of there, out of there and say you're not going to do this because who's doing yes. anything? And, and how... You know, I mean, I understand uh, chain of command and respect of the law and going through the process. But when you're, when I'm hearing all this, this stuff, no, no, no. There's no time to wait on anything. No, that's why I'm trying to raise money for a ticket. I'm, I'm low in money because I was in Washington and Minnesota campaigning from September 2nd to December 14th last year, and so I'm pretty broke trying to work the campaign and make money but I'm ready to go there if I had money I'd be on a plane now and go with her and get those kids out of there and I don't care if I have to sleep on the ground sleep in front of a police department sleep on the streets in front of a busy and say these kids are being abused and raped and murdered right under our noses help them that's what needs to happen because this woman Somebody gave her my name when she told him the story. She said she doesn't even remember who this lady is. She said, call, call this woman, Paula Flo. She will help you. And that's how that's she awesome. found me. She doesn't know who the lady was. I don't know who she was, but I know now. That's, that's and awesome. I, I am very ready to get on a plane and go out there and make some noise because America does not know about the 19 states beating kids. Not enough to get it through. And then the uh, people don't know that Child Protective Services is basically a cult. And the yeah. thing is, is that... that uh, Paula, it, just quickly, before it, we, uh, go ahead. Uh, before we go ahead. get off, um, now, if somebody wanted to support you in this effort, they are able to donate through your website? Yes, there is right near the top. It says PayPal donations, thank you. And they could click on that, and then it explains everything about it. Certainly a worthy cause, folks. So if you're watching this on YouTube, the link will be below. If you're in the chat room now, it's already up there. Just scroll up, the thehittingstopshere.com. Uh, if it strikes your heart to, to help Paula with this, uh, it's a, obviously a worthy cause. We've got kids that uh, are in danger of death or traumatized for life or, or God knows, sexual diseases transmitted. I, I don't know. I just know it needs to stop. I just yes. know it needs to stop. Yes. Uh, Paula, I'm sorry. I'm uh, just so pissed off about this. There I go again with oh, my language. Kevin, I didn't do as well as I started like off. I'm sorry. But we uh, oh. have uh, about two minutes, uh, maybe three, until you'll hear the bumper music start, which means we need to go. So if there's anything urgent that you haven't touched yes. on, two minutes. Yes. My, my last words, please visit our website, thehittingstopshere.com. Go to the left column. Click on Facebook. Read the description. I post there every day. Please learn about more. If you want to help and you're serious about helping, and we do want to hold that event in Arizona within the next 10 days. It's called Arizona Operation Let My People Go. And we will be posting about that on the Facebook as well as our website message board. It, our link to the message board is also in the left column. And we're desperate. I, I, will, I would do anything to be out there and make noise and not even come home until that bill is signed. Because if we are unable as a nation to protect kids from abuse with a bill already created, laying dusty on somebody's desk, we deserve to be in FEMA camps. That's all I could say. Not our children, but those of us who are not getting this bill through and know about it. It, it, the word has to be spread. CNN is not going to do it. The president's not going to do it. It's going to be people like Kevin who are out there trying to make a difference and myself and Jody and, and there are more out there, but they don't know. And we need you to help them know so we could get our children safe. Well, this is the nice thing. I mean, I'm going to call us old folks, Paula, because uh, oh, we're, we're old folks. Not really, but uh, uh, the young guys, the, and, and especially the ones that have suffered from this, uh, the ones with the online skills, I will say, they are uh, getting active uh, in stopping other kids. Uh, as well. so, 
Uh, they can expect us all. Paula Flo, thank you very much. Folks, we'll see you next Wednesday, 8 o'clock at the Voice of Humanity. Thank you, Kevin.